Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. I'm here today with a very good friend of mine, Grant Difford. And Grant is the owner and director of Waking Giants, which is an agency that helps businesses with one of them I read, strategy, leadership, all those things. Um, thank you for coming on board, Grant. Really My appreciate pleasure. it. Yeah. Nice to come to Big Smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we we're just talking before the episode that you've actually moved out into rural life. And how's that going? It's good. Uh, it's nice. We, you know, a little quiet spot to do our thing quietly. We're not ones for the limelight. So I kind of, it's good for my family. It's a, a family decision. My daughter goes to an agricultural school. We're kind of going mm. back to basics a bit. It's kind of the yeah. old Kiwi life, but um, so it's great. It's it's a way of getting away from the chaos that is business, to be honest. Yeah, fair enough. That sounds really good. Yeah. I'm actually a country girl myself, so I can really relate to you. I think I'm a country boy, but sometimes I like to come into, you know, a bit of clean, you know, yeah. the cow mucks aren't come can be a little bit challenging sometimes. <laughs> now, if I understand. Hey, look, um, we are running this this series to actually help entrepreneurs in terms of, you know, how do they get a better business but also a better life. And all of my um, my people are coming on board as guests. They have managed to achieve that. So it's about sharing how you got there. Mm. But before we get started, love to hear a little bit about, you know, what is it that Waking Giants does? What is it that you do? Um, and a professional and a personal success that you'd like to share with us as well. Um, so Waking Giants, I mean, to me, it started as my skills. I was a graphic designer by trade. Um, but And Wagon Giants, the concept was about um, getting the best out of people. But I, I fell into the trap of creating a business, doing what I knew to make money. Right. You know, yeah. Typical you know, e-myth. Um, but as the years went on, I found being leaning more towards the leadership and the impact of what we do and this imposter syndrome and and our ability to do things way beyond what we think. So we sort of steered the business down that. So Waking Giants is the concept of everyone has it in them. I have a passion for trying to work out what that is and, and enabling them to do it. And we particularly focus now on leaders because I think um, the world needs really good business. I think bi good business makes the world better. Yep. I think some of our governments and some of the nonsense around that doesn't. So that's my passion and that's sort of my mission with the business and we do that through you know quality strategy messaging and all those things so we're trying to trying to make literally better business more not, not just ethical but leaders having and owning and, and and building businesses that are more meaningful so it's not necessarily saving the planet but it's um it's having you know choosing to have three people in your business because they're great people rather than your goal to have a 20 person business yeah. um all of these what i believe are BS myths around what good business looks like. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that the hard way. I've played into some of these egotistical nonsenses over the years. And, and most of my personal successes are family and my daughter and everything is. Um, is when I went, I represent New Zealand at the World Championships in triathlon. And and that was through a really tricky part of my life. So I used sport to sort of condition myself for some resilience. So I went from a, a, a basic triathlete to the World Championship team in 18 months. So and that was the catalyst for me to sort of change my mindset about what I was capable of. Yeah. And that sort of started the journey. And then for the business, um, we're 10, I think, this month or next month. I think that's a miracle. That's awesome. Um, and I'm not a natural business person. I was never around businesses. None of my family had business. So I'm an outlier in my own family. Mm -hmm. So we're coming up to 10 years is nothing short of a miracle. So And, I'm, and I love it more than the day I started. Okay. Um, and it's been tough. So that's a success in my mind, really, because how many yeah. businesses fail? The, well, the, within the first five years, is there like 90% or something yeah. ridiculous, isn't it? And I think it's it, – and I, I do love it more than ever yep. and because I'm really clear on why I'm in business. You know, our whole family income is from this one business, so I have a lot of responsibility as a father and as a, as a human and got that old male, you know, protective yes. of my family. <laughs> yep. So, you know – for it to be more purposeful, for it to be more meaningful, sort of bridges the gap between it being a business and making money and, and, and what I do for my family. Mm -hmm. And that's the driver. So in business, it's, it's, it's really um, being in a place 10 years on that I actually really care about. Yeah. And, and what the next, 
you know, 20 years looks like, or, or, or however long I decide to keep playing this funny game we call business. <laughs> it is a bit of a game, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, I and mean, you were just showing me before that you know, obviously 2020 was a tough year yeah. for a lot of people, yeah. but in actual fact, it had some highs and some lows for you. Yeah. Would you mind sharing some of that with the listeners? Yeah. So um, at the end of 2019, I realized that the, the path we were on needed a um, an injection of, of, of pace or it needed something to change. And, and we had a situation and I made some fairly bold strategic decisions for the business. And I knew it was going to cause some problems. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize how big. And, and we had a dynamic of a team where the team wasn't fully made up of the people I needed around me. Let's put it that way. Um, and that ended up in some really tricky um a tricky situation with an employee, which ended up in, in a legal um, fight. And ultimately, I came off worse, as often we do in these yeah. employment situations. Yeah. Now, um, I look back on it and, and we did we we had that going into lockdown and that cost a lot of money. So we went into lockdown just bleeding money. <laughs> um, but what was amazing is once we wrapped, we, we dealt with that situation, there was two lessons for me. I I didn't remain resentful, um, which I think was really, really important because, you know, it, I find a lot of people can be resentful of people who leave their business or whatever, and they don't respect the lesson. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was I realized how brilliant the people that were around me were. And what we actually did is we came closer and we became a more, um, connected um you'd have to ask them but i believe we did yeah. and then as we went into lockdown you know our lease was up on our office and and it was like this strange rebirth through the pain and it hurt our family financially significantly we were real you know real trouble yeah um but and it, and it took me a bit of time i've got a bit of land and i used to walk the dogs every day did this lap and, you know, there were there were times I was sat on this bank looking into the valley. It's, it's a privileged life we lead. And I just wanted to cry. I wanted to give up. Um, but after a few days of doing that and, and dwelling on it and trying to work it out, I think one day I came back in. It sounds such a cliche, but um, I came back in and I was like, right, now time to start taking action. Yeah. Spoke to the banks, da, 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 spoke to my team. And, and we just agreed that we were going to go through this together. Mm -hmm. And I said I had most of the answers, but not all of them. I didn't know what the future looked like. Um, we didn't lose any of our team. They all got fully paid. Um, I, I just wanted to show them how much I wanted them to part of the vision. And then we just got on with it. Yeah. And um, and it took us six, seven, well, it took me six, six seven months to, to, to secure the ship financially yeah. um but i just didn't give up so my wife had only worked in the business part-time she said right i'll jump in and help more my daughter was wonderful she yeah. sort of understands daddy we run a business yeah and we include, how old is she now she's coming at eight okay so we included her on meetings she would ask about clients so we made it normal at home obviously working at home so we made business normal to her mm -hmm. and i'd answer her questions so that was really cool and then i was so lucky my we embarked we kind of tripled down on our vision like we went harder and it wasn't about succeeding we just decided to thrive and I was lucky I spent a lot of time with the clients on the phone and we we developed those relationships and we ended up having we ended up coming out of it a lot better but a lot more focused um we it was it was like the pain to get through to the the ease and, and, and that's how I use triathlon and my racing is sometimes you have to go through a lot of pain yep. to make it easier. Yes. <laughs> and and then, and so to me, the, there was a lot of lessons. I had some good people around me when things got really hard. I had clients who we were having conversations about money, staff, suicide, yep. everything. And, you know, that and, and we then became in this position with the people around us that we were in a trust. Mm. You know, we were in that. Circle trusted, of trust, advisor. trusted advisor and, yeah. and that was really powerful because that was what I always was striving for to to become more important in the conversation and so we we and then amazingly you know we worked through the year we took on we took on some more opportunity we took some more risk and and we sort of started to thrive and then 
we entered Christmas as the most relaxed Christmas I've had in years. Fantastic. Uh, but we were very intentional. Yeah. Like we had a plan, we reviewed the plan, we put in a lot of process um, and we found a new office. So we had, we, we'd got rid of this baggage that we had because one of our values is ditched the baggage. Yes. <laughs> it's our third one. And, and that was important for all of us because a lot of us felt very hurt by this situation. Mm-hmm. But part of my role was to not be hurt and, and rationalize and grow. And then we, th- then that sort of formed the new basis of our business for really the future. And I know you've got um, really strong values in your business because mm-hmm. obviously through EO together, I saw you putting, bringing that together, yeah. really bringing it to life. Yeah. Would you mind sharing those with us and, and yeah. what you do to bring those values to life in the team? Yeah. So I, I've always had them, but early in my business was transactional and w- to me, so we've got three. We used to have seven, but we we gotten right down to three. Um, and and something that really brought them to life. I went to see Brené Brown in um, Sydney wow. a few years back, my yeah. business partner, and she. If anyone ever gets the chance one day to go and see her live, she's amazing. She really is the most human, authentic leadership coach in the world. She is just amazing. And she talked about values being operationalized, and it sounds like operationalized is not the word for it but i was like how do we bring them to life so our number one value is make it happen yep so really less talk do and and that's where we balance the strategic work is like great we've got a plan but let's see it work so we have a culture of making it happen so we reverse engineer that and say well how do i make that happen Mm -hmm. you know do we have clarity of communication do we have the tools do we have you know what makes it happen and then so it's an easy value to live so if people don't meet the criteria uh, meet the deadline or meet the outcome we can reverse engineer what the problem was yeah and it's never about the person it's about process um second one is grow together so that's us as a team and us with our clients or our community or, or whatever so it's actually about getting closer to the people in the team being a more understanding of what they need so um we have we don't do performance reviews we have growth catch-ups Okay. So we book in, there's, there's, at the moment there's only three of us, but there's time in the diary once a month where we sit down and we talk about their growth. Yeah. So I don't talk about performance, we give feedback, I work out what I need to do better. So it's all about progress, not perfection. Mm-hmm. So growing together and then um, they talk about, um, Warner talks about their book Getting Naked. Oh, yes. It's about... Yeah. It's about taking a hit for the client sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it's not about you know, putting yourself out of business, but doing the things that are unseen, yep. which is growing together. And then the third one is ditched baggage. And we spend, uh, particularly leaders, and you, you'll talk to this, is we spend all our time up here. Yep. And ditch the baggage for us is, is twofold, is get rid of the resentment of mm-hmm. the things that didn't work, but also understanding that today we are where we are, tomorrow will be a little bit different. Yeah. And if it didn't work today, you start tomorrow and you try again and the next day you try. And so it's very much about progression, growth, thinking. So we can live those really easily because we only do the work that allows us to do that. Um, We have things like huddles. We have simplified technology. We develop courses that only meet our needs. So they are our guiding light. Mm -hmm. So we have to live them. And we all the business decisions I made have to reference them. So uh, I got an opportunity yesterday. So rather than just saying, yes, I'm now dwelling on how does it fit with our plan and how does it fit with our three values? And I will ask the team, I'm not sure where I'm at. What do you think we should do? And if they say no, that's it. That's it. That's, that's the decision. So we have a formula for how we operate. Mm-hmm. And, you know, two of us in our early 40s and then Nats um, in our early mid-20s. So we've got two perspectives on life, but we have an equal voice. Yeah. And we're working out how that equal voice happens. So it's ultimately sometimes I have to make the decision. But I we're getting to that point now where I, I don't even have to – ask people to make a decision in a certain way. They know how what the formula is to make the decision mm-hmm. and also allow accept, allow them to fail and allow them to experiment. So, And then we accept the failure and then we go, well, what, what do we learn from? What do we learn from? Yeah. So that creates a really 
in my opinion, like I said, you'd have to ask them, but it, it makes a really fun progressive environment well and it's actually building resilience as well right because the whole thing of resilience is actually learning from those mistakes and saying what could we do differently yeah. uh, which sets you up for success going forward well one of the yeah and one of the, the I, i'll never forget this lesson as we were going through, so we picked up um uh, uh, an import agency for a running brand you know my another big passion <laughs> mine yes sir. um and we we're playing at it for a year and we were really playing it and and i got i sat with nat one morning and i said oh you know, we had picked up quite a bit of online sales through lockdown, as many people did. And I was like, one Monday morning, I'm like, we either we either pull the pin or we go hard. And I was like thinking it, and she goes, well, let's just go hard. So we, within three days, we turned the whole model around. Yeah. And the first month, we, we'd gone from $400 a month to 15000 <laughs> And it, to me, it was about our mindset. We either fully engage yeah. or we play at it. Mm-hmm. And that that grew 600% in the first two, three months. And now it's, you know, we're looking at expanding that. So we that whole business is for my guys to experiment on. So experiment on digital, on strategy, on activation, on customer service. So we put projects into our business that are real, yep. that they can play with. So they affect the profit, they, they affect the budgets, they affect everything. So we do live learning. And, and you're and, also getting your team involved in some of those things that maybe a team wouldn't be involved in as as, yeah. as in profitability. What does that look like? And yeah, so yeah. We, we'll look at things like so we'll say okay, like at the moment we've got a real big problem with supply chain out of the UK and South Africa and uh, Indonesia, and we might have this opportunity in South Australia. Now, as much as I want to take it on, it will 200x the business. Yep. We can't get product, <sighs> so the the current model that we have won't work there because we can't we haven't got product. Yeah. So what we do is we look at the models and we look at how, so then we've got this this product line that we can really double down on, which is high profit. We know our cost per acquisition. We know our customer service model. So we say, well, for three months, we might just have to go down that route, mm-hmm. come back on our expectations of growth and accept that because there are things we we cannot we control. Can't control. We can't That's physically right. get product because yeah. they're six, seven months behind in the supply chain. Mm-hmm. But yet this thing's growing. Mm-hmm. So we're we're going through this together, and we're solving the problems together. It's not like me, the head of strategy. It's it's you know it, it's now going well digitally. How how does this work? And you know we changed something two days ago, and, and you know sales have gone through the roof. So we 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 it comes back to that. I'll speak from experience. The whole EO model. Yeah. If you know we don't recommend things we haven't tried. Yeah. And it creates this level of integrity that you know we get it wrong. We don't let it towards a client. Yeah. Or so we walk in the talk. Yeah, and and we and it's it's actually <laughs> my my understanding now is that you make a lot less profit short term by doing that because you actually test the food yourself. Yeah, but we're in the long game. Long yeah. game. So so, but I, I believe uh, that creates a rich environment for these guys because they're building a business. They're not just an employee. They're yeah. actually involved in decision making around growth. Then you apply that to a client business. They, they, they understand the commercials. Mm. They understand where we're trying to go. We understand the pitfalls. And and that makes a very different dynamic. That makes us a different kind of organisation. I read a book many years ago called Maverick by Ricardo Simler. Oh, yeah. And he was all about opening up his books on everything to oh. everybody in the organisation. And a lot of business owners would go, but, oh, you know, you can't do that. We should be keeping things to ourselves. Mm. I personally don't believe that at all. I think it's no. very important that, as you said, it's like if you ask your if I asked my husband what the cost of milk was, he couldn't tell you I because have no, he, no, no, no. And so then you can't blame somebody no. and sort of say, well, how can we don't know the price of milk if they haven't been told no. uh, or been involved in the process of buying the milk? And yeah. we have that. So my guys, um, we will. The only thing I, we don't share because I just think it's it's courtesy is salaries. Yeah. Everything else, I'll tell them uh, if if we're profitable. I'll tell them what cash flows like. I, I tell them like last year, I had to say no, no. Um, Salary rise. I said, I don't have the money. Amy and I aren't even paying ourselves <laughs> half the time. And I just open with them. Yeah. And and because what I realized is that they're not, if you have the right people around you, they're not judging you for being a successful business person mm-hmm. because success is relative. I own my own home. I've got lots of things that people don't have. So I'm already, my success, I'm happy. Yeah. So being honest with them, there's going to be, okay, there's two camps. There's going to be those who get scared and go, oh, God, there's no money in the account, oh. therefore we can't survive. It's like, yeah, but I live with that and I make that choice. That's half, it's kind of sometimes half the fun of it because you have to make it work. Yeah. And 
I'm lucky, you know, the guys in my business and my wife works in the business is we have an open conversation. They're not judging me. Mm -hmm. We're not judging each other. We're going, well, we're in this together. It's difficult sometimes. And, you know, it was last year when all this was going on, you know, we, we ended up losing a chunk of money and it, uh, a couple of guys found it upsetting that basically Amy and I weren't paying ourselves yeah. and, and then this was happening. And I was like, but unfortunately that's, that is the reality. Like you said earlier, business is sometimes you go without. Yeah. As a business owner. As yes. a business owner, you go out. But then I promised the guys, I said, you will get those pay rises as soon as we can. Yeah. And I did. I delivered within six months because I'd made that promise. And I can't speak on behalf of your guys either, but I do follow them on LinkedIn and uh, I yeah. see them commenting and I can tell that you have a, a team. Well, it's part of their truly... performance review. Nice <laughs> <laughs> <Excellent. laughs> comment. Yeah. 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 No, but you can see they're really passionate about what they do. They love what they're doing. And you can see you're a very close-knit team, which is great. Now, you made a comment in your intro that you provide me with that, you know, you'd much rather have three really good people than have the ego of 20 people. Mm. Can you explain a little bit more what you mean by that? Yeah, uh, it pro- propped up. So, obviously, we met a long, long time ago. Yeah. And... I fell into the trap of being because I was naive. I didn't I didn't know business at all, like yeah. nothing. I fell into the trap that I believed a big business, a successful business, was more people. Mm-hmm. And you don't see it so much anymore. But sometimes you go, oh, we're at 100 staff, we're at 200 staff, we're at blah, 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 or we're capital raising, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that doesn't really appeal to me because it doesn't mean you're making any money. No, I agree. Um, <laughs> and so over the years we've had lots of stuff we've had lots of wonderful people and we've had some people that just didn't align let's say yeah um and for the longest time i thought growth is about the amount of people who you had and the amount of work you did whereas actually we've got less people they are in the old they're on the right seat on the right bus yeah. we like each other we care about each other we like to hang out we like to do the work we do mm-hmm. we do the work we want to do yeah and to me, then I'm going, well, hold on. The world now is, especially after last year, do we need 100 people to create an X dollar business yeah. or whatever the outcome is? Or do we need to have a group of people that are fully engaged in solving things? So now we look at outsourcing or we look at technology and then, you know, the guys can say, look, they know when we're going to need a human being. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of the early days we struggled to pay the bills because we were just paying, paying salaries. Yeah. And the model didn't work for me. Um, we, we don't need a lot of people. We need really good people. So if we do have 20 people, yep. every single one of them has to be there for a very particular reason. It's not the ego of I've got a 100-person business. And mm-hmm. people do it and it's all business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, so so that I've realized that's really important for me. So now that I don't, if we're busy, yep. I look at why we're busy. I look at what that means. I look at what's scalable, what's not. So I guess it's maturing, mm-hmm. you know, still pretty childish. But I, I think... <laughs> and we all. <laughs> yeah, but I think I was following the... Um, you know, business for dummies model. Yeah. yeah. More people equals more profit. Not necessarily more people yeah. equals more cost. Yeah. And if you then don't have the right people, there's real cost and then culture. So, um, and salaries are often the largest part of any business, yeah. which means Nearly that, all yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go into a, a rough patch like we did last year, you know, that can be the end of you if you haven't got the right, the right people yeah. doing the right things. And, and I don't think you have, I mean, this comes back to what I was saying, writing your own rules. We don't, you know, I'm, there's, there's kids on YouTube making millions, whether it's a good or bad thing, who cares? Yep. Um, I've met businesses here. There's two or three people and they're, they're running $20 million businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, it, doesn't matter how you do it. My, my, my key message is make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. Like that's the thing. And I don't think enough people are. One, one of my friends once who specialized in small business and he's, he knows the data inside out. He's quite brilliant. I won't mention him. You probably know who he is. But yeah. he one day said about how do we stop failure rate of business in New Zealand and I said, well, I've got an idea. Let's stop people having businesses. <laughs> well, it's very simple because yeah. at the moment we glamorize owning a business, but our failure rate is so high. So mm. why don't we help these aspirational people say, well, you could be aspirational and brilliant within a, a business, mm. but why we accept we're trying to solve a failure rate. Why don't we actually lift the businesses that we have with great people but at the moment, we're fixing, we're going, yeah, you can start a business in under an hour. You yeah. can. It doesn't mean you should. No, nor that you'll enjoy it necessarily. No. And yeah. some people just 
aren't cut out for it. And last well, because year, the, yeah, there. there's a lot of as I said, a lot, a lot of um, roller coaster. Of, yeah, you got to be tough. And, yeah, it's be really tough. You got really tough, and yep. like, yeah. So, so I, I think and it's I controversial. Think, yeah. It's controversial, but I think it's better because you don't have damaged relationships, you don't have massive debt, you don't have these statistics. It's not a negative. I think. Because there's no test. But if you yeah. think about your business, I mean, you've got people in there who are effectively running a business without running a business because mm-hmm. you're engaging with them and involving them in it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how business should run. Mm-hmm. It's not about having employees. It's about having a team that is actually all on the same the same bus, heading yeah. in the same direction, knowing why they're doing it yeah. and being involved and helping yeah. to run that business. So that's this. This is, yeah. this is the ego of the leader. Now, ultimately, in our business, I know it comes down to me. Yep. Everything that goes right and wrong is down to me. It's not that I can take the credit for it. Yep. But if my team is disengaged, it's something I've done. Mm-hmm. If um, if they if I don't share the information, it's something I've done. And and I think that's that people people it's easy to blame an employee. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, if you're a crap leader and you've got no strategy and you've got no culture, da da da. Or, or, People like to be led. Yeah. It's just behavior. You read anything on it. People like to be not told what to do, but they like to. Some people like to be part of the system and grow with the system. Some people like, like us lunatics, like to try and <laughs> work out what the system's doing. Yeah. I think people are afraid that the employers will make them look bad. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm really cool. Like, that's fantastic. Um, she takes me on all the time. And at first, I found it really difficult because. It was, you know, it was bruising my ego. But over the time, we've found the way that works for us and we've coached each other. So she'll go, no, nah, that's not working. And I'm like, okay, well, why? And she'll go, this is great. Yeah. So once again, drop the ego because that's how that's how your team will accelerate because it, I, think, I assume it shows a level of integrity and trust and respect and a capability. Yeah. But also then turn around and go, well, look, that – no, I'm going to make the decision this time because that's just not right. And we do that too. Sure. Um, yeah. No, I'm conscious of time. Yeah. I could sit here and talk to you for mm. hours and hours about this stuff. But I would like, if you were, before you go, to share three kind of key things that you could share with the listeners that they could put into practice in their business right now that would actually help them in terms of getting a better business and better profit. Uh, number one is do less. Do less. Really, yep. really easy. Um, coming from an obsessive strategist is is do less and and laser focus on the thing that's going to make the difference, yeah. which seems really obvious, and that's why people don't do it. So, like, every, if ever I'm riding my bike and there's a stone in the road, if I look at the stone, I'll ride over the stone. If you yeah. ignore it, you go around it. So do less, get rid of the distractions, and do the thing that's going to make them biggest, that's going to have the biggest impact. Fantastic. And it's mostly going to take you 10 minutes. Yeah. Or it's a phone call, or it's an email. Um, I think... <laughs> It's really cliche, but have values that actually mean something. Don't do some arbitrary task that kind of integrity, honesty, trust. Well, they're human or traits. worse, yeah. an acronym, you know, yeah. we've got our, our company name. We'll use that as yeah. a beginning letter for each yeah. value. <laughs> um, and then work out how to make them actually work, like mm. operationalize them. So we do this because of that. Yeah. We do this because of that. So we're currently doing um, a redistribution of wealth thing through charities. And so we've got a list and um, the team will decide where the money goes. So they, they've got a list of charities. The only rule is that a, the highest percentage possible has to go to the actual cause, not administration. Yeah. So we're growing together. We're making a difference. We're, put, we're making it happen. We're actually making change. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so it's operationalize your values. Yeah. And I think three is the sweet spot. Yeah. And, and also conversationalize them. So, like, you know, make it happen. What does it mean? Well, yeah. make it happen. Ditch the baggage. Yes. Know what that you means and, and yeah. grow together. We know what it means. And I think three is the magic number. It's, it's my and everything is, Well, it is yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. actually from a human brain point of view. It's about the most we can remember. Yeah. And I always use the analogy, you know, send your partner off to the supermarket yeah. and ask for one or two or three things. They'll probably come back with them. Yeah. Give them more than three without a list. Yeah. They'll come back with everything else but those three things. So, And, and then <laughs> number three, um, I, I, well, this is a very recent uh, discussion I had yesterday and a post I did yesterday is we had a growth through one on the team and I said all I want you to do this year is just be that bitch that much braver yep. they looked at me and I said oh, I, 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 yeah. I want you to be brave I, I want you to test things I want you to push because I feel the first 9.8 um, months of my nine years eight months of my business I, I just wasn't brave enough and 
And I think sometimes you've got to be brave just to move that needle, just to really leapfrog. And like my business partner said, 5% is not growth. Yeah. No, that's that's business as usual. Yeah, so <laughs> be really brave. You know, pick up the phone, go on a podcast, um, ask for the business. What's someone going to say? Mm-hmm. I mean, I asked, I did something this week. I asked and I thought it was a 98% no from a really influential source. It came mm-hmm. back and said, no problem. That's bravery to yeah. me because then well, people don't ask often. Yeah. Well, they don't do. Yeah. They don't do. Like I said to you last year, me and a mate, um, I said to a mate of mine, he's just joined and started running. I said, Do you want to do an ultra marathon? He goes, Yeah. <laughs> he said, What is that? And I explained. And then it was only when we got further down, we were about a couple of weeks out, going, We're actually doing the toughest ultra marathon in New Zealand, in the mountains. What is wrong with us? And it was life changing. Mm. Like we did the work, we got into it, we we suffered. But now we're ultra marathon runners. Yay. <laughs> so, but in, I think we, last year, the great thing about last year was it forced people to move 20%, yeah. not one or two. Mm-hmm. So be brave has, has got to be the third. Fantastic. Mm. Hey, look, that has been absolutely brilliant. Um, congratulations on a successful year last year. And here's to brave and bigger <laughs> things for this year. Thank you so um, much. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.